Hi, and welcome to Allen High School AP Chemistry, and we are working on kinetics. And we were in the midst of discussing mechanisms and how to derive a mechanism from a plausible, uh, derive a rate law expression from a plausible mechanism. So the one we hadn't done yet was the one that involved a very fast equilibrium. Now, when we have an equilibrium, and, and I know we haven't discussed that unit as a whole, but what we're looking at here is pretty simple at this point. It just says that the rate forward is equal to the rate reverse, so it appears that the reaction has stopped. And so when we see this, it says fast, combined with this, the double reversible arrow, that's how we know we're dealing with a fast equilibrium. Now, remember that our rate determining step, so our rate determining step is our slow step. So let's start our analysis by first deriving a rate law. Remember it's an elementary step, so for elementary steps we can go from the stoichiometry. Now, because we've got a variety of steps in here, I'm going to call this K2. And all that is is representing its K from the second step. So if this was step one, two, three, four. And remember, we always go from the reactant side of the arrow. So I have this funky mercury complex here, this ion, mercury chloride oxalate. I'm not sure what its real name is, but it's what it looks like to me. Now, since it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry, that would be first order there. And then the oxalate is C2O42 minus. Uh, yeah, so let's take a look at that. That would also be to the first. Now, hopefully you have noticed a problem with this. And that's that this mercury to chloride oxalate ion is formed and then disappears. Substances that form and disappear are intermediates. And they cannot show up in our rate law expression. So I need to find something to substitute in for that. And that's where that fast equilibrium is going to come into play. Now remember, rate forward is equal to rate reverse. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit in here and let's take a look at what we have in the forward direction we're going to take we're going to take the rate law from that reactant side of the arrow and i'm going to call that k1 it's the first step and it's the forward and i'd have hgcl2 to the first because that's an implied one c2o4 2 minus also to the first because of that implied one. I, I can't emphasize enough that I can only do this because we're talking about elementary steps. Soon we'll have, go back to overall reactions and we won't be able to take it from the stoichiometry. Now, that would be the forward rate law from our fast equilibrium, but since rate forward is equal to rate reverse, I can set this equal to k minus 1. All that minus 1 is showing me is that I'm dealing with step 1 in the backwards direction. It's a common notation for that. Now, remember, we go from the reactant side of the arrow. So this time, I'm going to be putting HgCl2, C2, O4, 2 minus. That's our intermediate. Now, if I can just solve for this equation, which I can pretty readily, solve this equation for my intermediate, then I would have um, a series of, of parts of the equation that I can substitute in up here. So let's go ahead and do that. To solve for this, all I have to do is divide both sides by k minus 1. So I'm going to bring my k minus 1 over to the opposite side, do the opposite operation of multiplication, which is division. And so now I have a factor that I can substitute in to this original rate determining rate law and eliminate that intermediate. So let's continue that algebra 
You don't have to show me, remember, every detailed step of the algebra. But now we would have rate is equal to, I already had K2 from here. Now I'm going to plug in, instead of this whole thing here, I'm going to plug in my new equality. I'm just going to substitute this in. Now, you want to make sure you keep very close tabs on terms in this. And it's common for a question to ask you about these k's. So we want to address that. So I've plugged in this here for this term. So I've accounted for this. I've now accounted for that. But I still need this. So it's C2O42 minus. Now, let's cluster terms and simplify. We can't really tell the difference between among these different k, these different constant values. Now, there's individual experiments that we could do, but just with what we have now, we can't do that. So what we're going to do is assign this. This is quite common notation. This whole cluster of k's is k prime. So k prime is equal to k2 times k1 over k minus 1. Okay? And so I'm going to put k prime here. So let's put the rate in there. We don't want to forget that term. OK, ah, oh, man. So I just erased, but fortunately you have that. So I'm going to put rate is equal to k prime. That's that cluster of k's here times HgCl2. And now I have an oxalate times an oxalate. So that gives me oxalate squared. What that means then is that it is first order with respect to HgCl2, and it's second order with respect to our oxalate. And um, that's pretty much it for our mechanisms. Now, we are going to be going on. And notice I forgot my squared there. So let's get that in there so I don't confuse you too much. Um, we're going to set mechanisms aside, but they're an important consideration because they'll help you understand why a reactant might not show up in a rate law expression. And it's because that reactant may not be or is not involved in that slow rate determining step. Doesn't mean it's not important. It shows up. It would be part of our stoichiometry. It just means that it wasn't part of the critical step that is going to determine our rate. So we will be moving on to how we actually determine rates and calculate rates. So until then, this is signing off.